Welcome to the Product Quest podcast. Thank you for joining us on our journey to better understand innovation and product strategy. My name is Jonathan Edwards, and joining me, as always, my co hosts, Jan Vermuth and Scott Burleson. Our guest today is Giorgio Pauletto. Giorgio is head of strategy and innovation at SIG, the industrial services of Geneva in Switzerland. SIG is Geneva's public utility company providing water, energy, and telecommunication services to the canton of Geneva. Giorgio studied management sciences and engineering at Stanford, got a doctorate in econometrics at the University of Geneva, and was a visiting fellow both at the Hoover Institution in Stanford and then at Yale. Before joining SIG, he worked as a technology strategy and foresight advisor for the state of Geneva. Today, we will be taking, uh, talking to Giorgio about how to foster innovation within a large public utilities company and the challenges that one faces. And we'll also talk about how to get a glimpse into the future through foresight, also known as future studies. So, Giorgio, welcome, and I think we'll dive right in. I think it would be interesting for the listeners to understand a bit better what SIG is, and maybe you can tell us a bit about this company, SIG. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you for the for the invitation. I'm really happy to to be here with you uh, for this podcast and. Um, uh, yes, SIG, uh, as you said, it's a service industriel de Genève. So the names, the name is actually encompassing the, 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 the idea of the mission of the company, which is uh, serving uh, the Geneva canton, the Geneva region with essential services that are, as you said, electricity, gas, water, sorry, but also wastewater. Um, we will see also fiber. And now we're delving into the topic of smart cities and, and, and so on. So where does this come from? Um, basically, it's, uh, it's what is called uh, uh, um, SIG is an autonomous public low company. It's more or less like the Geneva airport or the hospital or even the university. And uh, it has uh, this mission to serve uh, the, the community, the, the people, the citizens, the people that are residents on the canton. Uh, it's been uh, founded by, if you'd like, a capital of 100 million that was put by the Geneva uh, city, the Geneva canton. Since in Switzerland, we have uh, these two uh, levels of uh, organization of the state and the Geneva also other municipalities. So um, uh, altogether, it's like, you know, 50 percent, 55 percent of the canton. Uh, money that was put there, uh, thirty percent for the Gene for the Geneva city, and fifteen percent is the smaller uh, towns, if you'd like, uh, in the canton. So it's a it's a company that uh, that, as we said, is uh, is uh, organized more or less um, as a, as a as a private company. We do have a board, we do have a, a committee, an executive committee with executive directors, and and. Uh, and we do have, uh, you know, uh, key results. Uh, we have a revenue of about a, a million, uh, uh, a, a billion francs <laughs> in 2021. And uh, we do have also a consolidated income uh, of about 10 million um, that, uh, that we share back to the owners. And we do also uh, reinvest into projects uh, in the, in the, in the, the idea of uh, making things work better and to expand also the the activities. So the basically it's it's owned partly by the state and by it's also privately owned. Is that correct? No, it's it's only publicly owned by the state. But since uh, in uh, in Switzerland you have different levels of the state, we do have a part that is part of the canton, which is the. The larger region, if you'd like, and then we have the smaller municipalities like Vernier, Carouge. Uh, the city of Geneva is also a, a, a municipality, but it's the bigger, biggest one that we have. It's about, uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, two, uh, half of the population of the canton lives in the, in the really the, the center of the city. 
So depending on, you know, on the size, uh, they, they put different types of money. And we, um, they, you know, the story goes that, uh, of course, they wanted to, um, uh, to, to, um, to put together also the, 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 to mutualize the, the efforts to, to distribute uh, the infrastructure, for instance, for electricity, for the pipes of water and so on. And uh, if you if you want to have a date, it's you know the the the, the moment we were created is uh, is really a long time ago. It's really the founding is 1931, and it can go back even to 18, 18, 1891 when the jet d'eau was uh, sprinkling out the energy that was uh, coming from the, the 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 you know the water flow of the Rhone River, and since uh, it, it produced uh, an excess of um, of pressure. Uh, at the end of the day, you had like a fountain that was sprinkling out and that became the symbol of Geneva. We take care yeah, of so, those. Yeah, so just for, for the listeners, the Jet d'eau is a, a, a famous landmark in, in Geneva, which was, uh, I think, created in various stages. I, I, I looked at the history before, uh, before the, the show and uh, it does, I mean, there, there are various stages of evolution, but basically, I think around in the end of the 19th, century 1890s something like this they started building this and nowadays it's uh, 140 meters high so it's i think it's the second highest in the world or something um so but definitely a, a, a old landmark in geneva and and just so we we get the context clear uh, so the 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 company is owned by various components of the state shall we say just to mm-hmm. make it simple uh, but it is a private company in the sense that people, uh, the people who work at the company, are actually civil, ser- not civil servants. Is is that correct? It, it's not- a, it's yeah. it's almost true. It's it's not exactly like that. We, we're we're not we don't have a, a private participation, so we're not allowed to have uh, private investors. Uh, we do have. We can, uh, of course, uh, uh, loan money. From banks to uh, you know to 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 uh, capitalize for the for a debt for a project and so on, but the control of the of the board is purely uh, public, so there is no private. Uh, we're not like, no. for instance, yeah. in, in another canton, you have a different type of uh, organization. The Energie is a is a is a, a, a société anonyme, and it's a it's a purely uh, a private company. But then you have fifty-one percent is owned by the state. Mm-hmm. Okay. And here the, the the organization is a little different, and the state and the, and the, and um, if you'd like uh, the contracts with the with the um, uh, the, the employees is uh, very similar to uh, to the uh, public administration, if you'd like, but it's regulated in a different way. We we are you know freer, a little bit freer. For instance, the the um, the CEO of uh, of our company, Christian Brunier, does not have a a, 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 a public contract uh, for his job. He can exactly, you know, yeah. He can be dismissed from a day yeah. to another. <laughs> that, that's okay. That's that's what I was trying to. <laughs> you explained it much better than I did, but that's so you, kind of what I was trying to say. You can fire people. Everything you can fire people. Yeah, exactly. Not not exactly as easily. Uh, for the lower levels, no, yeah. but for, for the higher levels, it's you know you're basically a fuse. <laughs> okay. So I think you're the first guest we have that um, okay. You you don't work for the the state, but let's say who's working in a mm. in a, a state owned company, and I I think I would be interested a bit later to dig into how that actually works sure. in terms of uh, how do you manage political agendas and this kind of stuff if that in any way interferes. But um, mm-hmm. before that, I, I before getting into those kind of details, I thought it'd be interesting just to understand also a bit better what uh, talk about the innovation you do at um, uh, SIG. So uh, against the industrial services of Geneva in English, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, as a citizen of Geneva, I, I I have the feeling you're a very innovative company. There's a lot of stuff being done. Um, uh, I mean, maybe you can tell us a bit more about that. Uh, but maybe I have a um, a first question: Is mm-hmm. okay? How is innovation conceived of, of in a, a public company such as SIG? 
is do you think innovation is viewed differently than say in a in a you know private company like uh, whatever i mean facebook or whatever any company we can think of is is the notion of innovation the way you would define it different yeah of course uh, first of all uh, it's it's very important to to uh, to also distinguish between innovation in a in a smaller or a, in a startup company and the level of maturity of the of the organization of the company and then of course also uh, in which sector it uh, it, it works it uh, it uh, develops its activities so uh, as you said it's uh, you know depending on the size we're about uh, uh, 1700 employees so it's you know a medium large size company for 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 geneva and for for switzerland uh it's not the same dynamic at all than uh, you know a very small company and it's not a startup it's uh it's re really uh you know a more traditional company and it's also an engineering you know service industrial it's part of the industry so you know have people that live at six o'clock in the morning that dig holes that uh, you know put pipes in the in a uh, underground uh, that repair uh, power lines uh, and um, you have to take into account that there's a very large diversity of uh, of uh, of jobs also uh, for instance we do also have people that work in uh, energy trading so they have you know all these uh, wonderful uh, uh, screens uh, and nowadays they're very busy because they have to buy and sell uh, more more buy than sell uh, <laughs> electricity for uh, for the next month and the next year and uh, at the lower price possible to to help the clients that we have so it's um it's as you said it's uh, it, it I, i would see it as a uh, you know two types of uh, of uh, differentiations uh, first of all the size and the maturity of the company and the, the larger the company uh, the, maybe some of the similarities uh, can be can be uh, also um, uh, the same and uh, and on the other axis maybe also the type of uh, the type of um uh of sector you're in as you said you know a company that works in the information technology or media uh, is is completely different than uh, a company that works uh, more in the uh, in the industrial uh, type of uh, of sector yeah well i mean so what i was trying to get at is um Uh, what is the, the uh, so so what is the point of innovation somehow so uh, we would say okay if a if a private company doesn't innovate probably after a while it'll it'll die out um mm -hmm. as a public services uh, company who would be the who are you innovating for in the end i mean who are the stakeholders and and mm -hmm. why why should a public company innovate in, in fact that i think that's maybe what i was trying to to get at sure. there just to play a little bit devil's advocate i mean you could you mm -hmm. could even say that some of our listeners probably will think well state and innovation how can these two things go together in the first place mm. so but that's maybe kind true. of well will be yeah true true it's uh, it's it's so it's uh, always interesting to 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 delve into that um uh, just to to for a reference point i, I also worked for the for the for the for the administration it's a totally different uh, type of uh, of uh, set uh, setting and uh, and context um here we we do have clients we do have people that turn on and turn off the uh, their their appliances and um you know you have a, a commercial strategy to actually get uh, uh um, services to people and uh, molecules to to people or electrons and uh, and you do have really Uh, 50% for instance of our turnover is uh, is really in the market because uh, large companies can choose to uh -huh, uh, get yeah, their okay. ener get their energy from another provider than us and then okay, we have so, to transport it for them yeah so so i think that's an important point that um and actually it's been in the news quite a lot lately is that companies uh, actually are in a liberalized market meaning they they can actually choose uh who they who which provider they use for their their electricity and i i know for electricity maybe also for gas and water i would be surprised but anyway i would imagine mm, at least no, electricity yeah. and uh on the other hand individual consumers citizens mm -hmm. can't uh, mm -hmm. really can't choose i mean they they just get mm -hmm. you know uh, 
the electricity from SIG. So, That's so yeah, right. I can imagine that you would have to be, so the same rules, let's say, apply to you if you, we're talking about um, company clients, uh, institutional clients. Uh, but mm -hmm. if you have uh, private citizens, of course, uh, I mean, they can't really just, I mean, they can change uh, town and go and live somewhere else, of course. But, mm. They, they don't right. really have much choice in um, in who the provider is. That's correct. That's correct. Uh, it's uh, it's absolutely true. We do have these kind of uh, uh, services that we call regulated uh, uh, customers, if you like. They they have uh, you know it's only uh, above a hundred thousand kilowatts per year that you can actually choose where you you buy your electricity from. Uh, the the people that actually made that choice now are are really not that happy because the the prices went <laughs> exactly yeah. sky high uh but the uh the idea is is really that to to open up the market that's the that's the confederation the switzerland has you know to abide also um to the rules of the european union it's it's been pushed since uh, many years to actually liberalize this uh Markets like transportation, public transportation, the uh, telecommunications, and infrastructure also for energy. Um, now the question comes back: If you look at uh, what happens in France, uh, what happens in Germany, what happens in the UK, um, you have many questions about: Is that a good that is really uh, going to be better dealt with if it's liberalized or not? But that's more of a political and general question. Uh, that we have. But nonetheless, as you said, there is this tendency. So for the people that we serve that are, if you'd like, uh, 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 that are uh, for which it's compulsory to to uh, buy electricity from us, we do have also different levels of, of quality of electricity, if you'd like. Uh, uh, we've been the, the first ones to uh, actually in, in, uh, propose uh, what is called Vital Electricity Vital, which is uh, the grade of uh, of quality of electricity in sense of uh, you know you could you could buy pure green electricity which is 100% local 100% uh, renewable uh, that comes from solar from uh, hydropower uh, and uh, a bit of uh, of wind power uh, but you could also choose to have only 20% or 50 50% and you you get a s different prices so you you yeah. still have you know a little bit of choice uh, to yeah. actually make something. So the, the consumers have a, a certain level of, of choice. So maybe we'll get back a bit into this these more general innovation questions. Uh, I wanted to dive a bit more into, you have a very interesting job title, which is Head of Strategy and Innovation. So right. I, I was wondering if you could just tell us a bit what 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 it is actually, what you are doing, and sure. also maybe tell us, how you believe your your job has evolved so how did you see it when you started and how do you see it now hmm. yeah it, it, so it's 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 been moving around uh, i've joined this company about uh, seven years ago and uh the, things have developed also uh, first of all uh, i would i would say three parts uh, in my job first one it, it would be uh, uh the foresight you talked about a little bit uh, uh in the introduction uh, saying, you know, what the future will look like, where the puck is going to be, and where should we skate. Um, the, the second part is, uh, you know, it, this is pure, purely opening uh, at the macro level, seeing, you know, how the context is changing and what changes we should have. The second part is really strategy. Uh, where should we put our attention and our resources, and where should we go? And the, the third part is really innovation, which is, you know, what is missing? Uh, what is actually becoming obsolete? What are the new arenas we should uh, invest in? And that's the, the third, bar, third part. It's, it's really the innovation part. And, and which of these three is hardest? <laughs> um, <laughs> all of them are, are challenging in a certain sense and very exciting too. Uh, there are, you know, at, at different levels of maturity, at different cycles. For instance, now we are at the end of a of a strategy cycle. So, you know, next year we're probably going to 
revamp and uh, reopen uh, you know the the reflection on uh, on uh, where should we go and uh, and uh, what should we invest more on of course there are things that will remain uh, there are things that are uh, you know long term infrastructure that we develop for instance the thermal energy that comes from the lake this is a major uh work under on the way and uh it's going to take another five ten maybe 15 years before it's completely uh developed uh we do have the solar energy which is picking up and we have to also meet uh, uh demands and uh, constructions and this is accelerating so those are two topics that are really in uh, in the in the transformation or the, uh, the the development part and you have also emerging uh, domains where you you have n- almost no market it's um, uh, clients are you know uh, very uncertain it's uh, it's really a, a bet so you know you, you have to look at that too for instance hydrogen what it, what will hydrogen play as a role as a as a vector in, in energy or uh, how s- long-term storage is going to develop or how data is going to be um, uh, more important in the, in the management of the of the energy, or how is uh, the different uh, fluids of energy, uh, how are they converging? Uh, for instance, uh, when you have refused water, uh, that, uh, you know, it's basically water that comes out from the, uh, from the, 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 the apartments and also uh, from the city, um, uh, it's actually not water that is that cold. Uh, and we can actually get back some heat from that to produce electricity or or energy to use mm-hmm. it and to in, re-inject it in the in the in the network so you mentioned three activities foresight strategy and innovation are these mm-hmm. so done in parallel or do you you do first force is there kind of a um a sequential approach so it's first foresight then strategy then innovation or how does that mm. work? It's easier to tell the story in this in this uh, in this uh, sequence. Uh, but as you know, those are moments, and uh, they actually, of course, uh, uh, things are not lined up at at the start line uh, uh, at the beginning, and and then you know you you kind of you know uh, say go and and everything everything uh, develops. So of course there there are cycles. Um, uh, usually we do foresight for at least 10, 15 or 20 years to actually look at the, at the, at the longer, uh, horizon. And then we go back to maybe 10 years for a, for a corporate strategy. And then we do have, you know, innovations and, uh, strategic plans for b- business units that are at a shorter level that are, uh, uh maybe updated each uh, three to five years. Then we have operational plans that are even you know at a smaller scale maybe for a year and objectives each year or each six months so you know all these things big basically move together of course you cannot move a strategy each day because you know for a large company that would be very unsettling but we have also the opportunity to actually um uh how do you say um uh, kind of raise the flag and say oh something actually changed so uh, importantly that we have to review the strategy and uh, we, we won't wait the, the five years or the, or, or the four year cycle. We, we have to actually amend it immediately. Can I maybe, uh, so maybe jump, jump in and, and, and maybe dig into something a little bit deeper. I really like it from an organizational point of view that, that strategy and innovation is, is kind of put together in your, in your position, because I can imagine that, there's a couple of people out there who work, who have innovation in their title, but are far, far away from strategy. So, or that, that really don't have the impact. I, I assume that, that you can have on strategy. So does that have to do with the technical nature of, of the business or where did this come from? It comes from the CEO. It's really come and it comes probably from me too. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, I must say that to, to the listeners, it's not a secret that there is a lot of job crafting in this type of positions. Uh, you know, uh, the, the first two or three years uh, I was doing um, uh, strategy and uh, and uh, and uh, more of uh, innovation at the design and uh, and um, coaching level, but now you know. 
uh, we included foresight. We included also um, okay. maybe yeah. the advantages. Of course, you know you have always advantages and drawbacks. And, and maybe yeah. just to give you a, 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 an answer to, to, to your question, it's I think it's it's very useful to be linked to the to the to the head of the company because you know otherwise it's really difficult to actually get the attention even. In this position, it's I'm not an executive uh, uh, director, so mm. I, I work with the CEO and with the executive directors. But I do not have a large team that actually does things. I I can go and um, mm. foster uh, this type of uh, behavior in the in the different uh, business units. Uh, but what is interesting is is really to have, of course, the the the, the, the possibility to link that to the strategy of the company. That's a very important part, and also to get the visibility that uh, it needs. On the other hand, of course, uh, the closer you are to the uh, to the business, uh, the the easier it is to actually, you know, probably also to get resources because uh, you know at the higher level they say, ah, you know, it's a, it's a, it's probably not a good idea to have a large team that is. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. we don't know exactly how to manage it, and uh, it's better to have people that are. And I prefer that to have people that are in the business units, and mm -hmm. so we can also work together. And we also we can also work. And and you know, my my role is is, is really to encourage them. It's more of a cultural change that I'm trying to do, and yeah. the, and 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 the idea is really to work with them so that they can be themselves. Um, the innovators, and um, uh, my role is is really to uh, to shine light on them and to to empower them to actually do it. Uh, one of the objectives is really that uh, the different business units have people that are uh, also uh, innovation uh, chiefs, if you'd like, and champions. Mm -hmm. And um, and this happens right now. It's uh, you, you have, for instance, Smart City has a. Uh, organization with uh, an innovation structure. The networks do have people that uh, get together and and you know judge their own innovations and 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 encourage encourage their innovations. And and for me, this is much more important than having a large team uh, that actually you know outsources uh, the energy of the innovation. Uh, it's much better for from my point of view to actually yeah. foster that in the business lines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here, here we get to the the, the meat of the the subject, which was actually my my next question. Could you maybe uh, um, bring us through how you actually do this concretely? How how do you bring cultural change? I mean, this is obviously a big topic, and uh, and many people ask this question and and complain. Oh, the the organization is not innovative enough. You know, how can we make mm. people and organizations more innovative? Big question, but. Maybe I'll just start with that. So, how do we, how do you foster innovation in a in a team? What are your approaches that you use? Yeah, exactly. I, I don't think there is a, a general answer to that. It would be too easy. Um, it really depends on the culture of the company and, uh, of course, the, the 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 domain where it works. Uh, from from my point of view, what is important is, is really more to have innovators or entrepreneurs than innovations. You know, you give, give a give a good idea to uh, to a team, uh, people that are not uh, that uh, keen to innovate, and uh, uh, you basically have nothing. And give a bad idea to a team, uh, people that are um, <laughs> more open to that, and, and and they probably will transform it into something good. Uh, so the, the the idea was really, first of all, I would say to have a common language. Uh, that was something that I encountered uh, many difficulties with uh, when I arrived here, is that everybody was talking about innovation and nobody was uh, having the same definition or was using the same words. Um, what is the difference between, you know, creativity, imagination, innovation, invention, uh, entrepreneurship, um, uh, do we do innovation when we do market watch and uh, we see that, you know, uh, other people do the same, uh, another thing and we copy it? Um, is that is that okay? Uh, do we have to have something that is totally transformative? Um, should, should we use technology? Uh, and so on. So all, all these questions were 
kind of mixed. And uh, one of uh, my first jobs was also to, you know, um, uh, give the methodology, explain, and also uh, have uh, this conversation with as many people as possible uh, to have and to build a common understanding of what we have. And we, you know, of course, uh, there are many definitions. Maybe that would be the next question is uh, <laughs> what definitions do you have uh, for, for innovation at SIG? And actually, you know, you can look at many different uh, definitions. Everybody has, uh, has one. Um, I, I really like, uh, well, you could look at the OECD. It's, you know, like four sentences of innovation, uh, of product, of, uh, of services and, 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 and process and so on. And, but I really liked one that, uh, that comes from uh, a person who was uh, the uh, dean of the, of the business school. Uh, I think it was at uh, Berkeley. Uh, that said, you know, it's a fresh idea that brings value, and uh, we adapted that, mm -hmm. saying, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a new idea. But it's not an, only a new idea; it should be transformed so that it has an impact and it has value. It brings value, and we we should define value. And value for us is uh, as we are serving people in the community. It's not the same as a private company. We we uh, put a lot of effort into environmental value, a lot of effort in social value, and a lot of effort in economic value. So, um, for instance, environmental value would be, do we save CO2? Do we um, use less uh, materials? Uh, can we, um, uh, you know, can we, uh, in social value could, could be, you know, do we improve the quality of the service? Do we lower the cost? Um, and, uh, and, uh, that would be the economic value. The social value would be, uh, do we learn something? Is there better security for our employees? Uh, do we bring value also to, to society in a certain sense? Of course, this is more qualitative in, in certain cases, but in, in sometimes, sometimes it's, uh, it's very clear. It's very clear. Can you maybe, I'm, I'm very interested. So I, I really like this point about, about kind of clarification or, 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 or kind of ending up with the shared mm -hmm. definition, shared language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of give a little bit more, because I think there's a lot of power and truth in that. So, but, but how do you design mm -hmm. that? How do you design kind of so that this happens within an organization? Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a lot of, of pedagogy uh, uh, presentations, uh, talking with people, giving uh, also, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I give a, um, a course in, inside the organization. You know, you, uh, the the next one is probably in a couple of weeks or next week, and we do talk about that. And and each time you 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 mention something, you have to explain to people that you know, oh, what do you mean by this word, this word? And little by little, it takes time. It's a, as I said, you know, it's a lot of repetition, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, uh, listening to people and seeing, you know that sometimes there is a discrepancy between what they say and what they think and uh, how they express each other. And once you make sure that uh, probably also in my position, I have the legitimacy to say, you know, this is what we mean by that. Do, do you agree? Does it make sense to you? And I found that, you know, this smaller type of uh, sentence actually resonates with people. And then, when it resonates, it's usually picked up again, and you can see in the language that they're starting to, uh, and the documents, for instance, if you look at the website, if yeah. you look at the, uh, uh, at the internal communication, I'm trying also to, you know, to say, mm, maybe we should correct this and that. It's, uh, maybe let's use the right words in the right sentences. Of course, it's, uh, uh, it's a long, uh, it's a long term, term, uh, term job, but it's, uh, it's something that that seems to to work, and it, actually, people are looking for that. You know, clarity uh -huh. and and good ideas are are usually um, uh, taken by people and 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 uh, encapsulated in their in their language, uh, which is already a type of success, if you like. Yeah, 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 a lot. I mean, it's it's. I I know this just from. I mean, we're a very small company compared to compared to you. So we're four people, but but already yeah. there, it's it it's. It, I mean, you have to establish this the way. I mean, we mm. work exactly. I mean, we sit together, work on the website, and that's mm -hmm. for the next couple of I don't know months. Usually, that's yes. the definition. That's how we speak. 
but it's it's so for us kind of because we're very, very small the website is the way how we facilitate yes. that discussion but it's much much more difficult i imagine to have a thousand people and then somehow get them to agree i mean yeah and it's it's never finished right it's uh you, you still have uh of course you have new people that are joining in uh, and but if if you know if you get a threshold of, i would not say 51 percent is, is you know is what we but even if there is somewhere like, is a critical <laughs> yeah critical mass yeah. and a critical heat if you'd like also mm. people that are in these topics that understand it in the same way it makes it much easier to actually have a conversation and, and to build something together okay I, so I, oh, sorry go on go, go, no go ahead well, I, I kind of don't want to. I, I don't want to jump around. I just because I, I would be really interested in in. So I have a couple of assumptions, and maybe they're completely completely wrong. So, um, I I feel like a lot of 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 where of the the areas that you work in are, are, are is a lot of technical innovations, a lot about technology. But maybe I'm mistaken on this. So I would really kind of understand what what is, mm -hmm. exactly does it entail, and where does well where does of course, the customer come in. So, or, or is it a lot driven by technology? And how how how, how do you manage? Um, sure. Yeah, maybe just there on this. So, how at one point? Of course. Yes, it, it, it's true. It's true. I mean, one of the uh, we see we see at least uh, uh, that's my belief, and I think it's it's shared also uh, within the company that uh, uh, technology is a is a huge lever. Uh, you know, it it it, it transforms everything it touches. So it's basically super important because it gives this possibility of change, and um, and uh, that opens up you know a, a wide range of uh, of possibilities uh, that is super useful. Uh, then we do also have something that is super important: is the values that we have. You know, for instance. Uh, 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 um, durability, which is uh, in English is sustainability. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, or the proximity with the people that um, uh, that are our clients, or the quality of the of the services that we provide, we do have all these values and also audacity in a certain sense. You know, uh, being able to be a little bit different than the the, the usual power or uh, water company that that people encounter, um, and um, and and these things are super important, more important than technology. So we for. I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. We we also have um, innovations that are that that come from HR. Uh, uh, we had this uh, during these uh, two years, as you know, uh, kind of a difficulty also getting in touch <laughs> with uh, and not only employees but also uh, uh, the, the students because the, you know, the usual uh, uh, job markets uh, and and fairs and forums and were all shut down. So basically, it's not that fun. Uh, and I think it was really not that fun in the in, in the first place mm -hmm. to go to a forum uh, to listen to a person that was presenting how the company is cool, and then to maybe go down in the uh, at the at the booth and uh, just hand in your resume and get a, a business card back, and uh, we'll call you back. Look at the site, and <laughs> so what we decided to do is really to. Uh, to try something different, uh, for instance, to have a hackathon online and uh, and to engage with these uh, younger generations, and that changed also inside because you know to organize that uh, we had also a partner, Open Geneva. But the, just the idea of having something different and uh, mm. to uh, to look for talents also with the soft skills that people have. Do they have you know the the technical abilities to actually collaborate on a on a whiteboard? Uh, do they have uh, this open mindness to actually participate in this type of uh, of, uh, of event for a couple of days? And um, how do they um, actually exchange with the others that they don't know? And, and you learn a lot, and they learn a lot about the company because, of mm -hmm. course, what do you see? Uh, well, if you live on, in Geneva, basically SIG is really, you know, you get a bill each three months saying, you know, how much you should pay from uh, your electricity bill. That's that's about it. If you don't pay attention, you have electricity, you have water, you're happy. Uh, so, you know, to actually know the things I was telling you a little bit earlier that we have people that work uh, also, we, of course, you have uh, you have people that, that, that work as a, 
as uh, lawyers, you have people that work as, uh, yeah. uh, you know, um, uh, marketers, you have people that work as traders of energy. Uh, so, you know, you have many different uh, type of jobs that are super interesting. Uh, and of course, we have a lot of engineers that work on uh, uh, electricity, on thermal energy, on uh, on water and so on. But just to get, you know, a better yeah. glimpse of what do we, what are we looking for? And we're not only looking for people that are super good engineers. Uh, you know, these guys, you know, PFL and the universities and the HOS uh, provide them and they're super well trained. Well, we're missing, still missing people in solar and thermal energy. So if you, if you, if you're in these fields, go ahead. You know, it's a, this is a job that is going to be in demand. Um, uh, but we also look at people that are not only stars, but also good players. Um, you know, I'm sure you, 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 you know that, uh, in, 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 if you've been, um, in contact with people or you manage a company or a group of people, um, you know, the, the, the big stars that are in the top right, uh, are super hard to, to manage sometimes, you know, so you, uh, we much prefer, I wouldn't say somebody, well, of course, you have to get, uh, have the knowledge, uh, uh, that is needed, but then, you know, uh, even if, if, even if I know that even in the army, if you're, a uh, an excellent, um, person in terms of skills and, uh, and physical training, if you're not a team player, uh, it, it won't fit. I mean, yeah. if something yeah. bad happens, then, you know, this is going to be the big difference. Yeah. And that's what we're looking for. So the example was organizing this type of um, pre-hack and hackathon with the students is, is really something that was new for uh, HR. They were saying, you know, how can we, how can, what is this thing? I mean, we, we, we get CVs, we, we do presentations, but then we found someone who was really open to that. And uh, because we had this crisis, they had to reinvent that. So, the, you know, that yeah. was the opportunity to actually try something different. And now they're continuing and um, they're saying, oh yeah, but this is cool because actually the, the, the image that people have from the company, the information they get, it's, is much different. It's much better. So we have a better fit and we do attract yeah. better talents because of that. So you so, see, that's, that's typical of a, of a social innovation, if you'd like. So I understand you, you're mainly technology driven and values driven. I think you, you mentioned those, those, those two components in terms of deciding how you're gonna you're gonna go forward with innovation? I, I wondered if there was some uh, some other component there. So you mentioned values, uh, sustainability, proximity, quality, audacity, and you mentioned technology. Uh, it, to come back to Jan's question, how do you it's, it, how do you fit, for example, the customer in there, or or how does mm -hmm. how does that work? So yeah, for, first of all, it's not just technology driven no? it's uh, the technology is is, is really a, a facilitator a catalyzer we know that it's changing everything but the real goal is really um, uh, to satisfy the customers first of all and also to be sustainable you know we have a role to play in sustainability that is super important with energy and with all the activities that we have with the environment so, of course, the, the uh, technology helps that, but it's a means to the end of uh, creating a better society that is more sustainable. That's really the goal, right? Mm -hmm. And so we're driven through this value. That's why I was saying, you know, mm -hmm. sustainability is so important. And, uh, no. of course... Uh, yeah, I, th I think it's interesting because actually you you answered the, the 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 first question I was asking around is innovation different for a public company or or a, a private company um, in the sense that of course your the value you mentioned it the value for you is you're creating value for for both in, in for the environment economic value and social mm -hmm. value and these considerations are not always there for for let's say purely private company. They, they can yes. be, of course, but not necessarily. I wanted to move forward a bit and, and talk sure. a bit about foresight. Um, sure. This is quite an interesting topic. And, I, and actually, 
uh, went uh, looked for some quotes from um, uh, Isaac Asimov's uh, well-known trilogy Foundation, mm -hmm. and, and I, I just want to start with a few of these quotes. So I had mm -hmm. so one character, uh, Mallow, who quotes another character in the book says, "To succeed, mm -hmm. planning alone is insufficient. One must improvise as well." So just for the, the listeners, for those who wouldn't know what Foundation is, it's basically a science fiction book about uh, um, a mathematician that invents this. Uh, so it's, it's, it's the study of a whole universe and how it evolves. And they have this technology, which is called psychohistory and allows them to, to plan, uh, to, to predict basically what's going to happen in the universe. Another mm -hmm. nice quote was, any fool can tell a crisis when it arrives. The real service to the state is to detect it uh, in embryo. Yes. So mm -hmm. I wondered if you could maybe, well, if you want to comment on these quotes, of course, uh, you can. But uh, maybe tell us a bit more about this foresight. How, how does it work? What, what are the different techniques? How do you go about it? I mean, is it even possible to, to predict mm -hmm. the future? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah. The, the first quote actually made me think about uh, the agility and the resilience that we have to have to actually be able to adapt to a, a different terrain, maybe, uh, or changes. And the second one is really about, you know, uh, this, this idea of foresight and, and how it's different from, uh, from prediction. Uh, or, um, uh, you know, um, it's, not, it's not at all to be able to uh, look at the crystal ball and say, you know, this is going to be the future and uh, being a guru that knows it all. Um, it's it, it's more the idea of of being able to imagine imagine futures um, futures with the, with an S uh, that that are so different from the business as usual, and um, and of course um, this happens in, in in many ways, and we've seen that recently, and there's been a quite a, a surge back to uh, to this idea of how can we be. Uh, how can we be, can be can we be more aware, more conscious of uh, that the future is not completely linear, huh? and uh, that we have changes? We, we've seen that before, but not at the scale that we're seeing that today. And I think there's a growing interest in this in this idea of how should we prepare for the future, and this idea of time and future and uh, and past. And uh, and uh, it is really is really something that is at the heart also of the crisis we're we're living. Um, so to give you an idea, is is um, of course you you as you said it's it would be excellent to have an oracle and uh, or, or a wizard that uh, that answers the questions, but we don't have that. What we do have um, is uh, is our attention and our imagination. So what we can do is uh, you know you can course we can collect data from the past but i know nobody that has data from the future uh we can build models that extrapolate i did that uh, you know when i was a student and a researcher for many years in econometrics and and, and statistics but it works sometimes in physical models uh, for humans uh, it's a little bit more difficult and uh, you know the structural changes are difficult to uh, uh, to imagine and to include, so you have to make hypotheses and, and so on. Um, there is a maybe you heard of the expression the black swan, uh, which is a, a story that is interesting that was brought by uh, uh, Nikola Nassim Taleb in, two, in 2007 uh, when the just before the the big um, the, the the big crisis of, uh, of financial crisis. Huh? Uh, saying that you know since antiquity uh, we knew that the swan was a, a white animal. Um, and everybody was reporting that it had white, white feathers. And, and in 1697, you had the explorers that went uh, in New South Wales, in, in Australia, and, and observed a, a, a black swan. And so just one observation destroys the logic that you had for so many years. And that's, you know, once one of the unexpected surprise that has a huge impact on, the, on, on, on what we see. But that's not the only animal that that we can imagine. And uh, think about the black elephant uh, in the room. Um, events that are largely previsible and predicted, but that that are you know not taken care of. Look at the climate crisis. 
that's something we talk about since the, the 50s. And then they say, oh, this is something that happens. And uh, oh, my God, I'm, I'm, I'm super surprised. Or look at the pandemics. If you look at the reports of the, uh, of the WHO, it was on the list since a long time. And the proximity of humans with, uh, with animals is uh, something that, you know, we're bound to have more of that. And you have other types of, uh, for instance, um, uh, black jellyfish, you know, small animals that taken one at a time are not that important. But when you have millions of them, it's super dangerous. So you, you have all these ideas that, you know, we can look at the, um, at some of the, of the, of the signals that the, maybe the future is a little bit already here as, a, as a, an author said, I think it's, um, uh, his name will, will come back. I'll, I'll tell you in, in a second. Uh, William Gibson. Here you go. Uh, that says the future is already here. It's not, it's just not uniformly distributed. Yeah, and it's, yeah. uh, it's, it's really about the signals that, that really show you. And innovation is also about that. Huh? You see the signals of change and you basically build on that and maybe make a bet, uh, and analyze, you know, how does that meet another trend that is maybe a more uh, a, a, a heavier trend or uh, 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 for instance demography which is uh, something that changes very slowly and then you develop maybe scenarios of change you know what happens if this trend actually catches up and um, and uh, this signal is actually amplified and this is a world that can happen and maybe that's there is another signal and that creates another world, maybe a third one, maybe a fourth one, and that and now you have a frame that gives you an idea of what a cone of possibilities is going to happen, and it's not the linear extension of what the past was. Can you do this in a in a sense in a in in, in a systematic way? I mean, how what is the because I can imagine a billion signals uh, that mm -hmm. could in some way be read. So how can you kind of manage the difficult, I mean, the complexity explodes, I, I imagine. Sure, that's that's very true. Um, yeah, one thing is to collect these, uh, these signals or to be actually to open up our attention to these signals and to, to have this um, uh, possibility of uh, being, you know, to, to, to look at things with different eyes uh, or to talk to people that are at the fringes and to, to explore different uh, topics that are maybe not in the same areas uh, uh, we're at. I always say to also to people here, uh, you know, sometimes we do travel uh, 10,000 miles to actually go see something different, but it's exactly in the same sector. And maybe just visiting the hospital or visiting the airport or the, the gas, the petrol station or the, uh, um, we do see things that are made in a different way. Just if you pay attention, there are small details that could be, you know, very telling uh, how, of how things changes, how people actually change uh, things and how to uh, they tweak stuff. And that could be also, so a signal of something that is uh, that is interesting. Um, coming back, of course, there are millions of signals, but then you know you have certain ones that also it's a, it's of course it's not a science. Right? It's a, it's also part of the intuition to be able to kind of tell and see if that's something that could develop in something bigger, and also to to see that there are many. Uh, ways, uh, you know, you have like a, a, a small light that lights up here, another one that lights up here. And a third one here. And oh, yeah, that looks interesting. If you look at these three things together, you could start to see how people are actually mixing them to actually do something different. And maybe with the mm -hmm. trend of uh, demography, migration, or metropolization of the, of the cities, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Or maybe just because we're, you know, in this trend and the, the society is expecting something then of course you have to choose a little bit the uh, uh, the signals, and that's also part of the game, and then group them together so that the story they tell is something that is plausible. Huh? I don't want to put something that is completely opposite because it 
probably won't make sense. But if you put them in a story that is plausible, then you start to build a new world that looks like something that could happen. It could be a bit extreme, but you know there are some parts of it, at least, that could mm. happen, really. And that's yeah. very inspiring. And the next step is, of course, not to stay. That's another uh, point that you're making about this uh, confusion that it can create. Huh? It's, the, it's really a curse of dimensionality. If you look at the future, yeah. you know, you have yeah. all these uh, <laughs> branches and uh, yeah. what if this happens and what if this happens. And, uh, but um, um, usually what we do is that we actually turn the problem on its head. So basically say, we're in 2050. This happened. This is the world we're in. Oh, okay. Yeah. How did it happen? In what position are you in? Are you happy? Okay. Are you still there because your company is still relevant? Or is this something that completely destroyed your arena and your market? And that's okay. also very yeah. telling about, you know, what's, uh, it's, it's a different story. It's like if you look at the soccer yeah. match huh? and you say, who is going to win? Um, nobody knows. But if, uh, if I say Brazil, Brazil is, is winning, how did they win? Then immediately yeah. your, your mind is clearer. You say, "Oh yeah, yeah, they, 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 they you know, they, they beat, um, they beat uh, the UK, they beat the, uh, the, the Germans, and because they were more creative, and, and you s immediately start to develop something. Uh, it's much more difficult to do it on the other, on the other. But that's just the way the brain is is done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I see you kind of you base you fix a couple of of things that you assume. Let's assume them to be true in twenty fifty, and then and then see what happens. Exactly. To exactly. your company and how how would you get there? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and the, the future is is not actually this envelope. Uh, in, uh, one mistake that we all make, and that's something that attracts us a lot, is is really to say, you know, which scenario is going to happen? I want to be in this world. Well, first of all, you're not controlling the world, so it's going to be difficult to <laughs> to be exactly in that world. Uh, and the second thing is that none of these futures is going to happen. None of them. Uh, this is more or less always the case that there is a part of this one and a part of this one, and maybe a small part of this one that is going to happen. And it's the combination of these three parts that is going really to develop. But it yeah. doesn't matter. Uh, it, basically, if you build your strategy on something that is, you know, bigger enough and you thought about this opening up these possibilities, then you have a more robust and more resilient strategy, which is what you're looking for. Yeah, yeah, and that makes a lot of sense. I, I just want to maybe highlight one thing that you said at the very beginning, which I kind of learned in the past couple of years. I think we can sometimes underestimate the value of fringes. So I learned this from, from design thinkers, to be honest. They, they introduced the notion to me of, of extreme users, they said. There was one example that I really liked where they kind of helped um, develop new scissors, a new pair of scissors. Mm -hmm. And their instinct was not to go to people, which would have been my instinct, to go to people who use a lot of scissors. But they mm -hmm. went to people who had arthritis. For mm -hmm. example. How do they use scissors? What's, what do they do in order to... So, And then they developed, a, a, I don't know, 100 times more ergonomically fitting scissors <laughs> because they didn't talk to kind of in bell curve in the middle things, but they went to the fringes. And I think sometimes we, I at least tended to forget this a lot and assume that, but there is truth and value in the fringes. I, Certainly I, if you work for somebody with arthritis, it'll work for everybody else. So by yeah, exactly. getting that part of the curve to getting everyone. And yeah. it's about going to the fringes and something, Georgia, you remind me of is there's a, sometimes people argue about the value of a financial model. In other words, you're getting ready to develop a product and some would say you shouldn't. There's you should not even you should not even estimate profitability or a net mm -hmm. present value. But I've always said you should, and, but here's the reason: because when you estimate it, you have to also say, well, what's the what, what's you have to think about all the conditions that change it, the assumptions. So what's the you know essentially what's everything that might cause it to, you need to sell more? What's everything that might cause it to sell less? And you look at your costs, what's everything that might uh, make it higher, what's everything that might make it lower. And, th and then in the, the so the point is when people um, are they they don't like the technique because they're like, well, that final number is not correct. But it's just like you said, Giorgio, your prediction is going to be wrong. But what you have is now this this you have 
just getting the assumptions on paper and you have the exactly. ranges of of at least what's more likely based mm. on the information you have and it's in some some say well it's just it's just not worth doing i think it's very much worth doing you just accept that it's imperfect and as you say, Giorgio, you'll learn things. I mean, could you, you probably couldn't have predicted, um, you know, the, the energy crisis in Europe now. But but at mm. some point, like maybe last year, maybe there were inklings of that. Like maybe when the invasion mm. occurred, uh, Ukraine, maybe you revised your model last February. And mm. as in uh, is a pipeline permit or something is not approved or somebody shuts down a, um, a nuclear plant or, or permits like you would just continually modify and so i've always i've always really disliked that when people uh disparage the idea of these financial models because it's not it's not that you get the right answer you get the in fact you get the wrong answer but it but it mm. gives you an expected mm. number and sort of um and sort of a range of possibilities and even just thinking through well what could happen okay what about nuclear plants going online all right what mm -hmm. about wars all right what about this what about this what about this that thinking through i think you're better off with that than without it yeah i, I agree with you scott it's uh it's a very interesting point you're making is uh, uh the process is more interesting than the result uh, yeah. Because it makes you think yeah. and uh, and 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 put down and jot down the hypothesis you're making, and you can of course then talk about you know is that the hypothesis that will hold water or not? Um, then of course uh, the context is going to change. But uh, uh, and another sentence that uh, we, we use a lot uh, when we do uh, statistics and models is, is saying you know models are to be used and not to be believed. Uh, so mm. you know. You, <laughs> You're basically <laughs> building something right. uh, uh, that is a representation of uh, right. a very simplified representation of reality. Right. So, you know, be sure that you can use it, but don't believe in it. Because, of mm. course, if you look at the numbers at the end of the day, they're probably totally wrong. But as you said, right. the process of really putting down, you know, what hypotheses are you making? Are they going to hold true? And um, can we test them? Uh, is probably something that is super useful uh, to um, to a venture. That's a great quote. Models are to be used, not to believe. Not to be it's believed. not from me. Uh, it's uh, it's from a well-known statistician. statistician and, uh... yeah. <laughs> so, so in fact, what kind of uh, models do you, do you build, or or maybe a, an alternative and similar question is: uh, Are there any tools you can recommend to to do hmm. foresight? Or do you do everything in Excel, or what's the approach? Um, it's more more of a, a process, and uh, and uh, if you'd like uh, workshops that you run, and uh, of course there are uh, methodologies to do that, methods to to actually do it. For instance, to scan for signals, um, to um, uh, to collect them, uh, to also uh, read. There are lots of reports. For instance, uh, even you know, big consultancies, uh, McKinsey and uh, Deloitte and uh, whatnot, uh, they, 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 they put out a lot of very useful stuff that is sometimes a bit too general, uh, but they're still, you know, very, very useful. Then, of course, NGOs uh, look at, for instance, the, uh, the scenarios that the, um, uh, the, the, the climate for the climate that, that was made by the, by the UN um of course all this information is is uh, is available it's out there uh it's just waiting to be to be uh, used mm -hmm. and then observation you know uh, if you if you're um you know if you just you know i, I do believe in uh, in in you put your attention into into things and 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 if uh, if we look that with fresh eyes as you, as you said for uh, the the design thinking part is really this uh, this idea of uh, of looking things, and I, I like this uh, this term of maybe you heard it. Uh, instead of déjà vu, it's vous jeda, um, which is the you know the déjà vu is something you 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 you've seen a thousand times, and you, it seems that you've seen it again and again, and 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 even your your brain is tricking you. Uh, but if you do vous jeda, is really the other thing is that you know next time you go to the parking, you know. Look at how you know. Why should we insert the ticket in a in a way, and not in the other one? Or why the machine doesn't understand the ticket in any kind of uh, way? Or um, maybe you're in another country, 
uh, and you suddenly you you start seeing things and say, oh, look at how interesting this is. It's completely different than, but you could have the same attitude tomorrow morning in the way at the way uh, when you go to work and just looking with a bit of more of attention to things and maybe you see something that is really useful. It's always interesting when you, you come back from a trip abroad or something you come back to your, your home country and, and you start noticing these uh, these small things that basically mm -hmm. went completely unnoticed before uh, mm -hmm. you know how, how people do ah, and, okay it's strange people do this and you're a bit of an alien in your own country that's always an interesting uh, yeah so to answer a little bit better to your question is, is really okay first of all is, is to either to collect that through desk research or uh reading stuff, being curious about stuff, and also having a network of people doing that, you know, having these discussions with other industries, other people, um, uh, kind of get a, getting a feeling, also getting a feeling of, you know, the trends, uh, just being able to say, you know, how much, um, you know, uh, if th there's a trend in demography, you know, that, uh, you know, the population is going to age, uh, people are going to retire, uh, we're in the baby boomer uh, retirement uh, zone. So, you know, what is going to happen in the next 10 years for the population, for instance, here at SIG, we know that in the next 10 years, there's going to be 50% of the people that are going to leave the company because they're, you know, we're, we, we're in this stage of uh, people that are, you know, 50 plus and, uh, and uh, you know, they're going to retire or to, to leave the company or maybe to die, sorry, unfortunately. But they there's going to be a big change in the next 10 years. And that's, of course, that could be a threat. But that could be a, a huge opportunity to to um, actually attract other people, to maybe rethink the processes, uh, maybe, uh, you know, use um, more of the technology to um, to augment the, the possibilities that we have as humans and so on. And uh, uh, so that's one thing is to to be curious, to, to gather this information, be it trends, be it um, um, uh, signals. Then, of course, to have to, to combine them together in a smart way or in a, in a good way so that you can be, build futures, maybe to build something that is more than just a list of variables that could change. But uh, what we do usually is, uh, is to uh, explain a day in 2040. You know, what is, how do I wake up? How do I go to the bathroom and brush my teeth? How do I take, uh, what do I eat for breakfast? Where do I go to work? How is my life uh, with my family? Um, uh, what is the relationship with my parents? Um, um, how are my children learning? Uh, how do I, how do I, uh, you know, uh, 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 yes, I, uh, how do I come back? How do I eat? And so on. And uh, all these questions actually can, um, encompass a little bit of the futures what, that we're seeing. This is more storytelling of the future, but that actually impresses the mind also to explain to people that, you know, this future is going to be very different and that's the way it's going to be different. It tells a little bit more than just, you know, saying uh, we will have more renewable energy and we should use less energy of this and that. But if you say, you know, we don't allow any cars to circulate anymore. And we're going to come back to um, uh, the Pus Pus, uh, the rickshaw, right? And um, we don't have platforms because they've been banned, uh, because the, they use too much energy. The, 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 the central uh, uh, units and the, uh, the, 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 the centers are, are spending too much energy. They, uh, this has been banned also because it's technology that comes from the US and from China, and we want to be in Europe, and this is, has to be independent. So all these people that were working for Uber and all these platforms, they don't have a job. So what did they do? They actually organized to have taxis, but taxis are not in fashion anymore because cars are not in fashion anymore. So they're, you know, they're, they have rickshaws and they go around the city with rickshaws. So, so it, it, it's, of course, it's something that is a little bit crazy, but at least it tells the story of maybe the cars are going to be banned from the center. Maybe the platforms are not going to um, to uh, to resist the laws that uh, the regulators will put. Maybe uh, the technology that comes from uh, China is not going to be uh, also allowed in uh, in, in Europe. 
and uh, maybe we can we will have to go back to a more uh, frugal way of uh, of uh, of moving in the city so you know through just an image that you have this rickshaw it tells a lot about other things and and people start to imagine these these different ways so once you have the scenarios and that they're developed you you can do what is called also a uh, um uh what is it called <laughs> uh, uh mm, well it's a uh, it's a uh, design objects of the future artifacts of the future and uh, and or stories about the future and then put people in this posi position as we were telling before and then let's try to look back at today what are the decisions what are the strategies that we should put in place so that we're happy in this world or we're not too bad in this world even though it's not a world that we would like and then maybe maybe there are also steps that we should implement so that we don't go into this direction or that we can influence so that we can shape to to move to a different direction very nice yeah i i really like that um, that idea of uh, oh, by the way the rickshaws is uh, actually I've, I've even seen some i think around this so uh, not yes. exactly rickshaws but so yes, it's not yes, that yes. far from so yeah open up your attention See the, the future the future is already here the future is already here exactly so open up your attention look at fringes at the fringes um combine different trends or different things you notice com combine things together um i really like this idea of uh, i don't know how to call it to start from the end or something that's what i wrote on my notes mm -hmm. but i'm not sure if that's the the right uh, idea of looking at okay uh we're in this situation backcasting back back backcasting is sometimes back, backcasting yeah um so well i think that that's a it's it, i mean i have to ask now um so should i invest in cryptocurrency or not <laughs> wow this is it's something this is, this is this is prediction right <laughs> i won't venture that. okay <laughs> So, Giorgio, thank you very much for for taking part in the in the podcast. I, I had a last question: is could you recommend three books for for our audience that you mm. found interesting on whatever you want, forecasting or just innovation in companies or anything mm -hmm. else, history, whatever? Yeah, sure. Uh, um, one that I, I really like uh, for people that are in in larger companies is called the Corporate Startup. Uh, by mm -hmm. Tendai Viki. Um, I have it here. It's, oh, sorry, the filter is not yeah. helping me. But uh, it's basically a book that uh, also takes the uh, the stand of, uh, it's not only a lean startup for, for startups, it's also not design, thing for, design thinking just uh, from scratch. It's, it's really also how should we implement that in, in a larger company? It, it also uses the tools that we all know about business canvas and, and, uh, and uh, customer jobs and things like that, but really set into a, a more of a corporate view. Um, then a second one I would recommend is, um, um, let me think, um, about uh, maybe one about uh, uh, future thinking uh, is, um, uh, yeah, maybe the Black Swan by uh, Nicholas Nassim yeah. Taleb. It's an old one, but still, it's still something that uh, that is cool. I think it uh, it's still relevant today. Uh, and and the third one, I would say, I would say, even uh, pick any book you'd like about uh, about um, mindfulness, uh, because this is something that helps to focus the mind. And I think it's 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 really useful to to just to sit. And look at things. It's a bit contemplative, but uh, you can do that by closing your eyes and looking inside. But you can also do that by opening your eyes and looking outside. And um, yeah, I would say, for instance, in French, in French, pick any book by Christophe André. That's uh, that's a good start. Uh, he's a great guy, a psychologist, psychiatrist, and also a person who has a lot of experience in mindfulness. Well, thank you so much, Giorgio, and I really enjoyed this, this conversation. And that concludes today's Product Quest podcast. 
So please send any comments or ideas for future shows to productquestpodcast at gmail.com. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you, Giorgio. Thank you very much. Very nice, very nice, very nice chatting with you guys. Thank you.